When the modern country of Yemen is brought up today, it brings about stereotypes of tragedy, poverty and brutal civil war. However, Yemen must be seen beyond the headlines, for it has a rich history of religious, political and mercantile convergence on the maritime Silk Roads. One of the most important chapters of its history is the Himyarite Kingdom of Yemen. This kingdom, which reigned from the 2nd century BCE to the 6th century CE, was a force to be reckoned with in the Arabian Peninsula, and a nexus point between the Mediterranean, East Africa, the Middle East and South Asia. It was a land of rich culture, with a diverse population of many tongues and sects. Who were the Himyarites, and how did they rule their kingdom? How was this economy set up on the Indian Ocean trade? And what was the mysterious monotheistic religion they adopted in the 4th century CE, three centuries before the rise of Islam? Welcome to our video on the Himyarite Kingdom and its history. This video is made available for free thanks to our YouTube members and patrons. We fund our free content through our program of exclusive videos made for our members and patrons, who get two documentaries per week not available to the public. We've got a growing collection featuring the First Punic War, the History of Prussia, the Italian Unification Wars, and a review of the classic text Xenophon's Anabasis. We're now covering the Russo-Japanese War and Albigensian Crusades, not to mention our massive Pacific War week-by-week -week coverage, and a massive pool of other projects. All this is made for and with generous donations from our backers. So if you're enjoying our content and want to see more, and support the cause of history, consider becoming a YouTube member or patron. You'll also get early access to public content, a spot in our lively Discord server, and behind-the-scenes info and goodies. We rely on our backers to support our growing team pumping out these videos, so thank you to everyone already involved, and we hope you'll consider joining in too. First, let us begin our video by discussing the origins of the Himyarite Kingdom. The Himyarites emerged in the 2nd century BCE, when international trade along the Red Sea was booming via ports in Egypt, such as Berenike. Other prosperous polities during this century, such as Rome, Parthia and states in India, like the Indo-Parthians and the Satavahanas, were engaged in a major network called the Maritime Silk Road. Geographically, Yemen was a bottleneck for Indian Ocean trade, and as a result, many of its coastal cities grew prosperous. Further inland, many tribes lived in the mountainous highlands, engaging in both agriculture and nomadism. From what we can surmise, before the rise of the Himyarites, the political landscape of Yemen was dominated by a coastal kingdom mentioned by the Greeks and Romans, the Menaeans, who were active in mercantile trade and practiced South Arabian polytheism. In addition, the Serbian kingdom ruled parts of the interior and seemed to overlap or compete with two other mysterious and poorly attested states, the Katabians and the Hadramites. Finally, the Kingdom of Aksum across the Red Sea in Ethiopia was an ever-present powerhouse in the region. As the 1st century BCE rolled around, the regional superpowers of Rome and Parthia began normalizing relations with each other, which resulted in increased trade between them along the Indian Ocean. Seeking to insert themselves into this lucrative maritime network, tribes in the highlands of the Arabian Peninsula began to move downwards and assert control over the Yemeni coastline, where they founded new port cities such as the Kana by the Hadramaut. According to Roman historians, during this time the Himyarites emerged as the most powerful tribe in the region. The Periplus of the Erythraean Sea, a Roman travel guide published around the mid-first century CE, mentions a king of two nations named Keribil, who ruled over the Himyar and the Sabaeans. With the Menaeans in decline, and the Katabians and Hadramites defeated, and the Sabaeans tamed, the Himyarites emerged as unifiers of southern Arabia. The start of the 4th century CE saw the short reign of Damar Ali Yuhabir, who set up his own dynasty during 321 to 324 CE, and then the long reign of Tharan Yohanim, who intervened in Inner Arabia between 324 to 375 CE. From what we can surmise, by the 4th century CE, Himyar was now a powerful force in southern Arabia. After uniting the tribes, the Himyarites began to make incursions into the peninsula's center, securing the submission of the local tribes in the inland deserts. One king, named Shema Yarish, is said to have finally broken up the independence of Sabah and also driven out the Aksumite kingdom from the coast. Eventually, the Himyarite kingdom had become powerful enough 
that its kings began styling themselves as the Kings of Arabia. Trade had always been an important part of the economy of Yemen, and with all her feuding tribes now united under the Himyarites, it was allowed to truly flourish. The Yemenites possessed many luxury goods which foreigners coveted. Frankincense and myrrh, considered prestigious and rare, were shipped through Sri Lanka all the way to the imperial Chinese capital of Chang'an. Evidence of the Himyarite kingdom's long commercial tendrils lies in Hok Cave in Socotra. This cave contains a collection of multilingual inscriptions written in Giz, Palmarine and Prakit, foreign languages native to Ethiopia, Syria and India. This proves that merchants from faraway lands regularly made the long westward journey to Himyar. There are few surviving historical records of the kings who succeeded Shamar throughout the rest of the 4th century CE, but we know that whoever they were, they ruled over the Himyarites when the kingdom was at the apex of its power. The capital of Himyar, called Zafar, expanded during this period. With its hills and large buildings, Zafar was reminiscent of the legend of the Imram of the Pillars, excavated by the archaeologist Nathan Drake himself. An advanced water irrigation system, facilitated by building many dams, facilitated fertile and stable local ecologies, which allowed agriculture to flourish and domestic food production to boom. Thus, through their economic management and clever utilization of their critical position on the Maritime Silk Road, the Himyarite dynasty turned Yemen into one of Asia's most prosperous lands. Of the many unresolved mysteries the Himyarites have left modern historians, the religious and ethnic composition of the kingdom is perhaps the most prominent. Today, the Arabian people and the modern Arabian Peninsula is of course synonymous with the Muslim faith, but the Himyarites predated the birth of the Prophet Muhammad by several centuries. Having said that, the two other Abrahamic religions were going strong by the Himyarite Golden Age, and both would play a huge role in the pre-Islamic Arabian Kingdom's story. Indeed, according to folklore, one of the kings of Himyar, Abu Karib Asad al-Kamil, was a convert to Judaism. As the story goes, at some point during his reign, Abu Karib invaded Central Arabia and besieged the holy city of Mecca, which was defended by Jewish and pagan tribes. During this campaign, Abu Karib is said to have fallen ill. As he lay sick in his tent, two Jewish sages, Kaab and Asad, met him and persuaded him to stop the war. Moved by the wisdom of these holy men, Abu Karib recalled his armies and went home, bringing the two sages with him. This experience had a deep enough spiritual impact that eventually the Himyarite king converted to the Jewish faith. This is most likely a mythical tale, but there is also a significant shift from 370 CE onwards in inscriptions only mentioning one deity in proclamations. So what was the situation on the ground? Throughout late antiquity, the coasts of Yemen had Christian and Jewish populations, with both of these communities divided between many denominations. Many sects of Christianity, considered heretical by the Eastern Roman Empire, found sanctuary deep in the Arabian deserts where they were out of the reach of the Roman Church's religious oppression. In addition, various Arab tribes still worshipped a pantheon of indigenous pagan deities such as the solar god Shams. Moreover, faraway merchants from the Buddhist, Hindu and Zoroastrian lands of India and Persia likely left a significant religious impact on Himyarite society as well. It's also possible that popular religions along the Silk Roads, like Manichaeism, were also present. Among the various surviving inscriptions from this era, there are dedications to a deity called Ilahan, which is a southern Arabian variation on the word Alilah, meaning the god. It is very possible that the religions of the Himyarites had a profound impact on the eventual development of the Islamic faith in later centuries, although the extent of this influence is still hotly debated. Scholars are divided as to the nature of the religion, and we will provide a review here. Henotheism, or the acceptance of multiple gods but focusing on one, is one answer that some have considered, but without much discussion. Hanifia, or the ones who had maintained monotheism in some form during the Jahiliya or period of ignorance, are attested in Islam, but this has been attributed to multiple figures, not to the Himyarite kingdom itself. Ramanan is also used for some local Arabian deities, but we're not sure if this was a henotheistic policy. Others have embraced the notion that Judaism was the religion involved. 
We have inscriptions of Jews in synagogues, like in Kani, showing a strong Jewish community in the region during this period. Some of the formulas in invoking this deity appear specifically Jewish, but most are more general in nature. We also have some un-Jewish practices, like ritual hunts, which are pre-Islamic customs in general. One counterpoint is that it was a looser form of Judaism, much like early Aksumite Christianity, which was much more general in its orientation. We also have similar concepts in the Hellenistic period, like God-fearers or Gentiles who sympathized with and used some Jewish practices, and the mysterious Hypostrarians of Anatolia, who merged worship of Zeus Hypsistos, or the Highest, with Jewish practices. There is also a third theory, that of a general monotheism used as an integrative nationalism between the disparate Christian, Jewish, Gnostic, Zoroastrian, Pagan, and hybrid denominations that populated Southern Arabia. In this theory, a general, open monotheism, which both henotheisms and various monotheisms could identify with, was practiced to ensure unity. Many scholars, such as Valentina Grasso, Iwana Gajdja, and Aaron Hughes, subscribe to this theory, leaving the possibility of experimental monotheism for Himyarites to use in a flexible manner. This can also be linked with the fluidity of religion during this period, which was not exclusionary and enabled other practices. This is also a difficult theory to prove due to its general nature. Whatever the truth, fascinating scholarship has emerged and all provide a testament to the religious diversity of Himyarite Yemen. The son of Abu Karib, who was allegedly murdered because of his constant warfare, was Hassan Yuhamin al-Himyari. He seems to have continued the policy of monotheism and warfare, invading northern Arabia and destroying some northern tribes completely. His rule continued the tradition of the Himyarites working in alliance with the Makhalif, or the autonomous tribal ruler kings of the region. He is said to have even reached the borders of the modern Levant, but was turned back due to his allies being exhausted from the fighting. He then died in an uncertain time, with some sources claiming he was greedy and kept the spoils of war from local allies called the Aikals. These Aikals organized a coup which ended up in his assassination. After that, our record becomes murky once again. In the meantime, geopolitics was turning its wheel as Yemen's crossroads position on the Silk Roads brought it into conflict with its neighbors. There seemed to have been diverging schools of geopolitical thought in Yemen, with a tilt towards pro-Persian politics. We do see various Byzantine ambassadors suggesting some good relations, but the Byzantines also had another ally in the region, the Aksumite Empire. The Aksumites were Christian and thus more in line with the Byzantine geopolitical bloc and also controlled the western side of the Red Sea, right at the bottleneck near Yemen. Yemen and Aksum began to raise tensions in a sort of cold war, as told in the 1001 Bell Button Nights, written by David al Kanadiani. It is here that we move our focus to the coastal city of Najran, a city where allegedly a few Christian Nestorian and Miaphysite sects had taken root, possibly one of the earliest in Arabia. These were outwardly looking and mercantile societies. In the early 510s, a new Himyarite king came to the fore, called Yusuf Asar Yathar, or Dunuas, known in Syriac as Mesruk, and in Greek as Dimnos, or Dunas. He is said to have begun raids on the southern coast, taking many livestock. He did this to avoid an Aksumite naval invasion, and one of his fears was a paranoia against the Christians of southern Arabia. Our sources come exclusively from Christian martyrological sources, but they go as follows. In the summer of 523 CE, one of his lieutenants, called Shari'il, began a blockade of the city, but the people would not submit. When Dunawas appeared, he is said to have promised to spare the citizens. The Najranites agreed, but Dunawas allegedly began a pogrom of the Christians and conducted a massacre of many Christians, such as the martyr Erethas. According to Cosmas Indicoplistes, when Emperor Justin I heard of this, he sent a letter to the King of Aksum ordering an invasion. With a naval force of over 80 ships, the king invaded the Arabian Peninsula and overran the Himyarites. Dunawas is said to have fallen into the sea and drowned himself. The Aksumite king Caleb overran Zafar and other major cities. This was a monumental disaster for Yemen, and while the massacre was the instigation, we can assume that other geopolitical games were at play. Massacres of Jews are recorded, as well as the establishment of many churches. 
Caleb preferred to keep the political structure of the kingdom intact, and thus installed a certain Himyarite Christian called Sumiafa Awufa, or Asemiphaios in Greek sources, though other sources claim it was another person from Aksum. This Asemiphaios was to assist the Aksumites in opening up the Silk Road to the Indian Ocean for more silk trade. However, one of his lieutenants, Abraha, conducted a coup and overthrew him. His own inscriptions mention him conducting operations in Central Arabia, and still trying to ensure some independence from Aksum. He accepted embassies from both Byzantium and Persia, and was a capable ruler. After his death, his sons reigned for a short amount of time before instability grew. One of the last kings of Yemen, Saifibn de Yazad, asked for help from the Persians, and King Khosrow sent some troops to him under a man called Warez. Both managed to fend off the Aksumites, but some servants killed Saif while Warez returned to Persia with many war spoils. The Aksumites tried to invade again, prompting Persia to intervene directly and fight wars for the next few decades. By the 570s, Yemen was a full-on Sasanian province, and it would remain so until the coming of Islam. So far, scholars have not discussed Sasanian sources about Yemen, so our historical record loses a lot of its clarity. Yemen, however, did not disappear. It was important in the early 600s as a trade hub, and soon a religious movement in the cities of Mecca and Medina brought Yemen into the world of Dar al-Islam, to which it remains today through both Sunni and Zaidi Shia denominations. The Himyarite kingdom remained legendary in the folk tales of Arabians, known for its wealth and possible Jewish affiliation. Despite their setbacks, the Najranite Christians remained strong until at least the 9th century CE. Paganism also faded from the region, with people letting go of Shams, Al-Lat, Aluza, and Manat. The Ramanism or Judaism of the Himyarites does not seem to have survived, though the Timonim Jews of Yemen survive in large numbers worldwide to this day. The mysteries of the Himyarites remain, from details of their rulers to the exact nature of their religion. However, with every new discovery and every new inscription, we find more and more fascinating information about this kingdom of the maritime Silk Roads. Yemen is more than tragedy and pain, but has a magnificent history and is perhaps one of world history's most intriguing religious and mercantile outliers. Perhaps only the jinn of the region, who have seen Persian, Byzantine and Aksumite pass by, and for 1001 nights have told tales to the stars and oases, know the full history of Yemen and who really Yamanan slash Ilahan was. But for us in the modern day, the patchy history of Yemen can serve as a story of just what a country can do in extreme ecologies and what a state can do on the crossroads of the maritime Silk Roads. It can also serve as a story of how a religiously and ethnically diverse society can produce some of the most fascinating and fruitful contributions to our collective heritage of humanity. Remembering this is the least we can do for the people of Himyar and their descendants today. More videos on Middle Eastern history are on the way, so make sure to subscribe and press the bell button. Please consider liking, subscribing, commenting and sharing, it helps immensely. Recently we have started releasing weekly patron and YouTube member exclusive content. Consider joining their ranks via the link in the description or button under the video to watch these weekly videos, learn about our schedule, get early access to our videos, access our private discord and much more. This is the Kings and Generals channel and we will catch you on the next one.